Hello guys, this is our class today. So in the previous video, we have introduced the, the, the definition of a meridian and cholesterol, and also the naming of meridian and cholesterol. What does it mean from when you see the hot meridian of hand tai yin, hand sao yin. So if you know that's the hot, this meridian links to the heart, travels to the hands, and also the in terms of yin and yang, it goes the least yin in the heart. Okay. So that's from the name of the meridian. Also from the name, because of because the heart meridian is hands sao yin meridian. The yin meridian travels in the medial side of your your hand, your your upper limbs. Now you will know the distribution of where the meridian travels travels. So and now we're going to introduce the distribution of the meridian. As the picture we show you at the end of last last video, the meridian all over the body become very complicated and then if you you want to want you to remember all of them it's quite difficult it's very similar to the tree here on the left side of the tree with the leaves then if i ask you to draw the tree if you i want you to draw the tree from your on your course, if you for drawing course, your teacher will ask you to draw the branches first. So in order to have this kind of shape, the tree, the first this shape, the first what you need to do, you need to understand the branches underneath the leaves, which we don't see from here. These branches, which we don't see on the left side. So if you want to draw the trees like this, the first you can you are going to draw the branches. Branches, you drop the branches, and then you add the leaves on the branches. Right, that's how you're going to drop the drop a tree. And also for the branches, definitely you will not start with the the drawing. From the from the end of the tree, or you will definitely you won't start your drawing from here. Where you are going? Where where are you going to start? Where are you going to start the drawing? Most of us we will start from here. You're going to start from the main branch, the stem, and then you're going to go to the smaller branches, and then to the smaller branches. So that's how you draw a, a tree. That's exactly how we're going to learn the, how we're going to memorize the meridian. You're going to, so here are the, the branches of the meridian. For these meridians, you don't need to remember the specific distance of the, the measurements. Because this distance, we're going to focus on the edge points. When we study the edge and most and most the location, we're going to focus on the measurements. But here, we just give you a general idea. How does the meridian looks like in our chest, in our on our back, or in the extremities? So that's from the chest, the middle line of the chest and abdomen. We draw a line there. So we're going to drop a line from here first, the middle line. Okay. So there's um, actually already a gray line there. The kidney meridian, the KI stands for kidney. The kidney meridian runs in the Most closer to the middle line. 
and it travels on it close closer to the middle line and then it travels towards the lateral sides and then goes up so that's the kidney meridian the stomach meridian goes to the next line similar to the kidney meridian but the size goes double from two turn to four turn the spleen meridian goes even further so there's the three in meridian in the chest three foot in meridian distributes in the chest so that's how does it look like on the other side is the mirror similar so if it goes if it goes from here here goes up and so that's the meridian is like a mirror so on the other side it is similar and then on on the back there's also a middle line and there's two blood meridian on the back so that's the general distribution and on the hand on the limbs On the medial side of our of, of our upper extremity, there there are three in meridian. On the lateral sides of the upper extremity, because three yang meridian, tai yin meridian travels to the front, jue yin meridian travels in the middle, sao yin meridian travels at the back. Or Yang Meridian. Yang Mi Meridian travel to the front. Tai Yang Meridian travel to the back. Sao Yang Meridian travels in the middle. So as you can see from these two, from the medial side or and the lateral side, if we see that's the distribution. Tai Yin, Sao Yin, and Jue Yin. Yang Mi, Tai Yang, and Sao Yang, as we we see from the previous slide, previous video, I told you that the name actually describe the the volume of Yin and Yang. Tai Yin got the most of Yin, Sao Yin got the medium, Jue Yin got the least Yin because the Jue means the lack lack of Yin. So that's the this one goes got the most in this one got the medium this called the least in the most in travels in the front the less in travels at the back the least in travels in the middle it's very similar for the yang meridian Tai yang meridian Yang Ming Meridian, Yang Ming Meridian, Yang Ming got the most of Yang, Tai Yang got the less, so it travels in the front size, Sao Yang, Yang Tai Yang travels at the back, and Sao Yang Meridian travels in the in the middle, so the the least Yin or Yang travels in the middle of your your hand. And when you, you go to the legs, the Sao Yin Meridian, this is uh, the medial sides of your leg. The Sao Yin Meridian travels at the back. Tai Yin. Travels in the, in the front, but it causes the Jue Yin travels in the medium from here. The main the, the measurement here you don't need to remember, you can focus later. And Jue Yin Meridian travels from the middle and it goes out to travel to the front below A turn above the ankle. So that's the general distribution on the hand 
in, in the legs. The in meridian travels in the medial side. The yang meridian travels in the lateral side. In meridian of the leg also travels in the medial side. Yang meridian travels on the other side. Also from from the distribution of the, the, the one on the upper limbs, you will see the tie in travels in the medial side of the front part. Yang Ming travels in the front side of the, the front part of the lateral side. So these two tai yin, yang ming. Tai yin, the long meridian, yang ming is the large intestine meridian. So if you remember the theories in Zhang Fu organs, these two meridians, they're also paired meridian, or we said coupled meridian. On the arm, you also can see they stay in similar area. The front side of the media, the front side of the lateral, Sao Yin and Tai Yang. The Sao Yin meridian is the hotter meridian, Tai Yang meridian. Meridian is the small intestine meridian. These two are also coupled meridian and also coupled zhang fu. The next we're going to discuss the circulation of the meridian. So this meridian, the qi and blood in this meridian, they they move in certain direction. It doesn't they they don't move just randomly. They actually move in certain direction. This direction related to the meridian, also related to the the times of in the of the days. That's why we're going to introduce the circulation from Huang Di who described that the three in meridians of the hand distributes from the chest to the hand. The three yang meridian of the hand distributes from the hands to the chest. The three yang meridian of the foot distributes from the head to the foot. And the three yin meridians of the foot distributes from the foot to the abdomen. So from the statement here, the description, it sounds quite complicated, but when you drop the picture, you see, it's not that complicated. The theory in meridian of the hand travels from the chest to the hand. So the theory in meridian travels from the chest to the hand. So it goes from here to the hand. The three yang meridian travels from the hand to the head. From the hand to the head. So it goes from the hand travel to the head. The three yang meridian of the foot travel from the head to the foot, so from the head to the foot, all the way down. The three yin meridian travels from the foot to the stomach and chest. So three yin meridian of the of the foot travel from the leg from the foot to the abdomen and chest. And you can see the circulation here actually. When you go back to the chest, it becomes a circle. So sometimes you will become confused that the, the, the meridian, the direction, why they curve to the hand. That's because you put your hand down. When you put your hand up, you will see the flow from the chest to the hand. To the hand, to the head, from the head to the foot, from the foot back to the chest. You see, actually, the flow, the circulation, is one circle. That's how the the flow, the circulation in the meridian travels, and they actually repeat for of quite a few. The lung meridian travel to the 
the large intestine, the large intestine goes to the stomach and spring in the heart, small intestine, bladder, kidney, pericardium, trigger and dry the gallbladder, liver meridian. So when we learn the meridian, the distribution of each meridian, if you see the the flow, the lung meridian starts from the chest, travel to the to the hand, the tip of the index finger, that's where the large intestine meridian starts, it travels to the head, which is close to the nose, and meets the stomach meridian. The stomach meridian from the nose, or closer to the nose, travel all the way to the foot, and meets the spring meridian on the toes. The spring meridian travel from the toes and go to the chest, meet the heart meridian. So that's one circle. From the hand to the, well, from the chest to the hand, from the hand to the head, from the head to the foot, from the foot to the chest. But when you go back to the chest, it goes to the heart meridian. It didn't go to the lung meridian, but the heart meridian also from the chest. You start again. The heart meridian from the chest to the hand meets the small fingers. The small intestine from the small fingers travels to the head, the blood meridian. The blood meridian travels to the foot and to meet the kidney meridian. The kidney meridian starts from the, the toes, travel back to the pericardial meridian. That's another circle. From, from the heart, from the chest to the the hand, from the hand to the head, from the head to the foot, from the foot to the chest again. And then there's the last circle, from the chest, when the kidney meridian go back to the chest, it also doesn't go back to the heart meridian. It goes to the pericardium, and then that's where pericardium started. The pericardium step on the chest, go to the Sanjiao meridian from the hand to the hand and from the hand to the head from the head to the foot of the gray toes to meet the liver meridian the liver meridian go back to the lung meridian now as you can see the, the, the circulation the meridian if if we define that the meridian start from the lung meridian, going to travel the lung to the large intestine, to the stomach, spring, the heart, small intestine, blood, kidney, pericardium, sanjiao, gallbladder, and liver, and back to lung. That's one circle. But as you can see from here, the start point from the lung, that's from that's something we define, that's, that we say that it starts from the lung. As you can see here, this flow is like a circle. There's no end, no start actually. Because once the liver meridian go back to the lung meridian, that's another start from another cycle. So you actually can't say that the lung meridian is the the star or the, or the end, because it is the star and it is the end. Each meridian, each point is the star point, also the end point. So that's the, the flow of the meridian. So from here you need to remember that the 
saturation of the meridian is in one circle although we got 12 meridians they float in one circle and there's no star no end it travels like like in a circle apart from the 12 principal meridians we also got another eight extra meridians the eight extra meridians it works like the the branches of the main meridian we also can store the qi of blood the extra qi of blood in the principal meridian the extra one can be stored in the extra meridians so that's the, the function of the extra meridians the extra meridians also why we call them extra meridians it's because the extra meridians they do not they the extra meridians they do not connect to one organs so as you can see from the, the name they got different names the extra meridians they don't apply the the same naming rules with the principal meridians they don't have yin or yang or they don't have organs in the name also the the flow of the extra point extra meridians they don't have paired meridians they are single they don't have they don't have such as the tai yin meridian the lung meridian the lung and the large intestine they are paired but for extra meridians they don't have the paired relationship in of either they also they don't have the flow direction so for the 12 meridians 12 principal meridians we said that they have clear circulation flow or circulation direction for the actual meridians they don't have the circulation direction and they work as the branches of the principal meridians if they got it's very similar to the relationship between the, the river and the lake normally the water stored in the in a lake but during the flood mm, oh sorry normally the the water stored in a the river they were they the water in the river they flow in the river but during the flood we, when we got too much water the water will store in the lake if it, it if it is drought they it it don't rain for quite a while the water can flow from the lake to the river to call a supply so the eight extra meridian work similar to the lake where we can store the qi and blood and then we also can supply the qi and blood so you got the connection with the 12 principal meridians the 12 the eight extra meridians also enhance the connection with the 12 meridians because these meridians sometimes they link to different principal meridians one extra meridian linked to different principal meridians the names of the extra meridians conception vessels or zone meridian governor vessels two meridians tone meridians belt vessels 
the in heel, yang heel, in link, yang link. As you can see here, we got the different names, and then when you see the when we started in the videos of these meridians, you will see we got different names. But these names just due to the translation as well. So the for actual meridian, actual meridians, we also use meridians. Sometimes we use the Ren meridians, Wu meridians, Hong meridians. Dai meridian, Yin Qiao meridians, Yang Qiao meridians, Yin Wei meridians, Yang Wei meridians. So the 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 writing, how to write the Yin Wei, Yang Wei, Yin Qiao, Yang Qiao. You will see, you you can find in your textbook or the following slides of the eight actual meridians. And then the cholesterols. There are 15 main cholesterols. There are many, many cholesterols that we actually can't indicate how many we have, but plenty. But there are 15 main cholesterols we need to remember. That the cholesterols from the main meridian, cholesterols of Rome meridians, two meridian. And also spleen meridians. What does cholesterol cholesterol mean? Cholesterol is the the branches, the main branches of the meridian. So it's very similar to the the first picture I show you in this video. The the trees. The main branch is the meridian. The smaller branch is the cholesterol. So as you can see from this that this. Demonstration. The meridian, the blue line, is 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 the meridian. The meridian and the the green lines, the green lines comes out of the meridian, go to the other parts, and then this meridian we call cholesterol, and this is the main cholesterol. From the main cholesterol, you also can separate into even smaller cholesterol. These some are we call tertiary cholesterol, tertiary cholesterol, or the superficial cholesterol. And this picture actually is the large intestine, the the green. The green line is the large intestine meridian. The blue line is not accurate, but it indicates the lung meridian is in the medial size, although they, they draw together and the, the measurement is not accurate. But let's just show you an example of the relationship between the meridians and cholesterol. And also, if this the blue line is the lung meridian, the green line is the large intestine meridians. So, which means the cholesterol comes out from the lung meridian and link to the comes out from the lung meridian, which is here, and link to the large intestine they meet here the large intestine travel from the fingertip back to the head so as you can see from here the cholesterol cholesterol the function of them it actually in enhance the relationship between the the couples the pair the meridian on the lung so the lung meridian when we introduce the flow previously, the lung meridian from the chest to the finger to the thumb, okay. and then the, the second one connect with the large intestine from the index finger to the head. So it seems that the two meridian have no connection because there's one 
from the medial side of your hand to the thumb. The second one, it goes to the index finger to the head, although it's from the chest to the hand, from the hand to the head. But what's the relationship between these two? That's the cholesterol. They from the lung meridian connect to the large intestine meridian. So all the meridian, all the meridians are similar. The that's the, the main function of the cholesterol to enhance the relationship between the paired meridian. So the there's another picture of the demonstration of meridian and cholesterol. The the main meridian go to the smaller branches as the cholesterol and go to the sm even smaller one. And this, if just imagine this picture, this kind of meridian and cholesterol all over, it's all over our body. And so on the superficial of our part of our body, it becomes similar to a net to protect our, our body. That's one of the functions of the meridians, defending the body against the pathogenic factors. So the first function of the meridians is the circulation, the circulation of qi and blood. Qi and blood need to move around our body. How do they move? If they move, through the meridian. The meridians, the meridians are similar to the highway. They move from the highways to different organs. The meridians connect to the upper and lower extremities. It connects to the left and right sides of your body. It also connects the interiors and exteriors. So all these de descriptions actually describe that the meridian connects, make our our body, the organs, the tissues, all different parts or different areas of, of our bodies with closer connections through the meridian, how they connect to each other, how the upper body and lower body, they connect to each other that through the meridian. And also the meridian can help to defend, defend the pathogen. So that's the, the main function of the meridians. Also, how do we use, why is it is so important to understand or to remember the distribution of the meridian, where does the meridian travel, why it was so important. It's because in, the, in our clinical practice, we can use the meridian, the distribution, in our diagnostics. We can diagnose according to the course of the meridian. We can inspect, we can see the patient from the meridian, which parts have problem. We can palpate from the meridian. We can palpate the body from the meridian. Sometimes there's some abnormal in certain meridians, the flow in, on the meridian. Then we can see the sound abnormal of the meridian. That's of the organs even, also this uh, biophysical features of the meridian. For instance, the cephalgia. Cephalgia is the, not another term of headache. Someone suffering from headache. The first gentleman suffered from headache from the, the side of the head. So that's where his hand holding his hands was, were holding. He suffered from the sides, 
And this gentleman, he suffered from the headache from the front head, the red parts. And the gentleman in blue shirt, he suffered from the headache. Also from the one side and the, on top of the head. Why the same disease is headache, self feature? Why they got different symptoms in different areas? And what do these different areas indicate us? Indicates the condition, the pathogenic condition of the body. What the different what does the different area indicate? The, the guiding treatment for acupuncture and motivation, guiding the meridian tendency for the for the materials medical for the herbal medicine. So if you know someone got headache on the side. In the next video, we're going to study the dis distribution. You will know that the Sao Yang meridian travels on the side of the head. And if someone got headache on the side, we can indicate that we can conclude that the patient have the problem with the Sao Yang meridian. So your treatment should focus on should focus on the Sao Yang meridian. If someone got a headache in the front head, that's the Yang Mi Meridian. And that's Yang Mi Meridian. You also can, during your treatment, you can either use herbal medicine or acupuncture points for the, head, for the Yang Mi Meridian. If someone suffering from headache on the forehead, so this clinical applications are according to the distribution of the meridian. That's why it was it, it, it is very important for you to remember the distribution. The next slide we're going to show you the the circulation. The circulation of the meridian. Why we show you the circulation of the meridian? The circulation of the meridian also related to the tongue. From the lung meridian, from here, that's where we said it started. Actually, it's not started. It's like the the whole orange circle of the the flow. There's no start, no end. But let's imagine if we start from the lung. From the lung meridian go to the large intestine. And this theory is recorded also in the classic. This is in the morning. The lung meridian sits above 3 to 5 o'clock in the morning. The large intestine, so the qi and blood, there are more qi and blood in lung meridian. And three and five o'clock, three to four, three to five o'clock in the morning. Six to eight a.m. for large intestine. Eight to eleven to five to three to sorry three to five. Five to seven. 7 to 9, 9 to 11, so that's the spleen, the stomach. This time, you can see the whole flow for the whole day, indicate different meridians. The reason why you need to remember or have an idea of these times of the, the meridian, these times of the flow in the meridian, that's because this times also sometimes can indicate or 
or clinical practice can help us for the diagnostic. For instance, if someone comes to you, he comes to you for the insomnia, so he didn't sleep well. When you ask during the consultation, he he told you that every night he woke up he woke up in at one o'clock in in early morning, the one a.m. Every day he wakes up in at one a.m. If only from here, what can you think of? The diseases which organs in my related to one a.m. That's here. So this patient might have the liver problem or gallbladder meridian problem, and these two problem also related to the emotion. He might have physical liver or gallbladder problem. Also, he might have. The functional of this meridian. So in a diagnostic, you will see, you will understand that the liver, also from the Zhang Fu organs, when we discuss the liver related to the qi flow, related to the emotion, it also can be very stressful and cause the qi problem. That's why always from the one o'clock. So you need to focus on the gallbladder and liver for this kind of insomnia. Also, there's another patient. He wakes up at 3 o'clock to 4 o'clock. Every day he wake up at here. So, there's, there's someone they wake up. Someone he work, wakes up at 3 to 4 o'clock. You can think about the lung meridian. So, for insomnia. Someone wake up at 1 a.m. and someone wake up at 4 a.m. The treatments might be different. The treatment might be different due to the different times. This is also the treatments, the different treatments for the same diseases, for the same disease. The same insomnia, but we use different treatments just because the symptoms might be different. This is not 100%. You can use it as a reference. You also can use as the supporting treatments for your main diagnosis. So, for instance, if someone got insomnia for like qi deficiency or blood deficiency, though. You also can benefit the lung on the premise of your fundamental treatments. That's why we, we introduce you in the, the time circulation of the, whole, the, the flow in the whole day. So in the next video, we're going to introduce the, the pathways of each meridian.